Hello again, everybody, and welcome into CTN Ann Arbor's Game of the Week. I'm Nick Wisniewski alongside Kevin Bryant, and we are here at Ann Arbor here, and we've got boys water polo. We'll be dipping our toes in the pool on this warm one, Kevin, where the Pioneers will be coming into the Huron River Rats. What are we looking for this evening? Well, let's talk about both teams. First off, Pioneer comes in more of a defensive team, and they got a throwback, Nick. Coach Packard is now back on the bench. So they have uh, maybe a different style than this team that the River Rats have faced over the years and been accustomed to. Flip side for the River Rats. They come in hot. Been scoring a lot of goals over this weekend. 17 points a game. Man, I'm looking forward to seeing who is going to come out and be the key player of the game when these two teams meet. I think we'll all be looking forward to it. Stick around. We'll be right back. And here we go, folks. We are off and running momentarily here from Ann Arbor here, and we've got the River Rats taking on the Pioneer Pioneers. Any moment now, we'll have the ball tossed in the pool, and both of these squads are fired up and ready to go, Kevin. Yeah, I mean, anytime you have here on a Pioneer playing against each other, the everything is turned up. You know, the announcers are turned up. <laughs> I think there's bigger waves in the pool right now. <laughs> we, we might, we might have 12-foot uh, squalls here this, this evening. You know, Nick, to start off this game, let's just try to give folks uh, kind of a preview of what we thought, not just the Open, but what we think between these two teams as far as strategy-wise. Pioneer, they're not going to be that big high-scoring team tonight. It's, it, that's the River Rats. It's, they're looking for opportunities to exploit and, and, and really try to put the River Rats on the defensive because they're an offensive squad. No, you're, you're definitely right about that, Pioneer. You said uh, may not be scoring a lot, but they are fast. Pioneer's got a fast, fast squad. Um, Coach Paul Barnett for the Rats even said as much about, uh, about Pioneer and, and what they can do with their speed. And it's going to be a big deal for the River Rats to slow that speed down and prevent uh, Pioneer from getting a lot of goals in transition. And here's you'll see Pioneer already starting to set up their uh, half-court offense. This is what they're going to need to do. They are really strong, not so much in transition, but setting up a half-court offense, trying to find that whole set in the middle, and then just firing some hard shots from, uh, from point-blank range. Looks like in the net there for the Pioneers uh, is a sophomore, Ralu. And there Ooh, we go. L, I'm sorry. And that is a quick goal by the Huron River Rats. Edwin Barnett put that one in, past Ruley on that one. Barnett, he's definitely one of those players whose name we're going to be calling an awful lot this evening. Yeah, between Barnett and uh, Shazmesler, uh, those are the two real big scores for the Rats, and that was a huge cross-cage shot there. Yep. And way to use the, the water in front of the netminder and skip that ball right in front of him. The old wet shot, as they call it, down in the pool. See Shemke working it down low. Rough and tumble down there right in front of the cage. And Russ Endicott in the pipes for the 
River Rats. He's a junior coming up from the JV squad. Long pass right there from uh, Endicott, pushing forward to his players. Another watch check. Big save there by the Pioneer goalkeeper. Cannot get the rebound, though. And that's going to be Sean Underwood scooping that one up and sending another one in. And just like Coach Burnett wanted, Huron gets out to a fast start. That one triggered on the long outlet pass, but it was a great job by Max Frazier of slowing down and allowing the offense to come back to him. Let's take a quick look at that. And that was the, the rebound off of that one shot. And you would think if the netminder, Roy Royale, could corral that ball as opposed to batting it out, maybe Pioneer would have saved that possession, Nick. Yeah, you'd, you'd like to think, uh, look back on that, and maybe they'll talk about that in film a little bit. But in, in those situations, like, man, that's a, such a bang-bang play by Ruley there. All he could do is get a hand out and smack it away. Uh, at that point, I've done my job. Now I need my defenders to pick me up. And his teammates on the offensive end will be picking him up instead. Jack Shemke, I believe, is the one yes, who put that sir. one through. Yes, sir. And that's what the Pioneers really need. Don Packard was saying to you earlier, you know, he wants to keep this match close. And, and anything can happen. Last year, of the four games that Huron won, only by eight goals. So just two goal discrepancy between these two teams in each match, that's really close for these Pioneers. Yeah, when, when these two squads, you skyline in the mix, anytime that uh, any of these three teams are playing each other, you know it's going to be close. Uh, you know, these are storied franchises, for lack of a better term. There's a lot of history of water polo here in this pool tonight. You've got Shemke pushing forward once again, showing that speed. Two defenders pulling him down, though. Yeah, minor call there, or reset, the Pioneers. And that one's going to get a man advantage, it looks like. Oh, but turnover possession, Nick. No, great, great opportunity for Pioneer there regardless. And now we'll see the River Rats just slowly, methodically push the ball up the pool. While it'll be up to the Pioneers to do a job to mark those three River Rats that we talked about right at the top of the broadcast. And you can mark them or just tackle them. There's another big opportunity right out in front of the net there. And that'll be Max Fraser, the junior for the River Rats, putting one in past Ruley. So right now it's just the firing squad for the River Rats, and everybody's trying to get on the stat sheet, Nick. Well, you mentioned it uh, right from the top, Kevin. This uh, River Rat squad can score some goals, and we're already seeing it. Well, I mean, they can score some goals, but come on. you got to help my defender. I mean, the that minder's there by himself. Come on. Where's all the defenders falling back in to help him out? Well, and I think what the problem there was, Fraser was left all the way to the right side open. I think that all the defenders were keeping their eyes on Schmitzer, Lee, Barnett, and Underwood, and then all of a sudden Fraser's just wide open. Right on the doorstep. So 3-1 lead for the River Rats now. Here we'll see the Pioneers start working that half-court offense around. That's a, uh, he's a relative of the coach, number 14 for the Pioneers, Luke Packard. Indeed, indeed. Think he's getting any extra coaching? Sorry? Think he's getting any extra coaching? <laughs> There we've got another relative of the coach, Edwin Barnett, in the penalty sphere right now, the penalty box right now. So you're mentioning both of the coaches are alumni, right? Yep, yep. Uh, Barnett, obviously, uh, grad and pioneer. Uh, sorry, grad here on Packard, a grad and pioneer. And we've got another goal. That'll be Aiden McCoy putting that one in for the pioneers. That's one of the captains for the Pioneers, helping them close this deficit to just a one goal. Oh, man, we really saw we saw great action from the beginning of that play where they, you saw what the, the shooter was doing, Nick. Mm -hmm. He wanted to bounce that ball right in front. A little wet shot again, right? Outstanding skip shot. I mean, he still got awfully high up out of the pool to get some real torque on that, so the, the ball not only skipped, it did have really more of a bounce move to it, bounced up high. 
How do you do that when you're just throwing down? I know how you can skip a rock sideways, but throwing down, that must be difficult to get some top spin on we it, can, right? We can work the physics out a little bit later. Yeah, it's, it's outstanding what these players uh, know how to do and uh, can figure out a way to try to throw off those opposing players and opposing goalkeepers. Yeah, Packard there finding Herbert down into the lane, and Herbert just couldn't corral the ball because of the defense mm. by the Rats. You see Shemke on the point up there, staying back. You see the Pioneers try to work it in with a man advantage here. Just a high shot sailing just over the net on that one. Was that Shemke again with the one-timer? I believe it was. I believe it was. We've got uh, Russ Endicott pulling the ball out. Sending it ahead for his squad. Again, we'll see the River Rats with more slow, methodical attack. Trying to flip the pool now, throwing the cross pass. We don't see that too often, Nick. No, not, not so much. It takes a lot of time off the shot clock with that ball just sitting in the water. I mean, it takes a long time for that ball just to get across over the pool. You're exactly right. And with two seconds left, they fire a shot just wide of the net. And that was a good effort there by 12 for the River Rats. Edwin Barnett again on the catch and shot. And with maybe his off arm, that was a mm -hmm. left-handed shot. You see Ruley starting off. There's Shemke once again. Trying to find his man cutting. Liam Herbert there receives the ball. Turns with a man in his face just wide of Endicott. Good job by Frazier down there in the hole, really uh, making it difficult for the Pioneer to get a clean shot. See Underwood slowly working the Rats up uh, into the offensive end. Received by Jack Den Hooter. There's Evan Barnett one more time. Boy, you don't see that a lot. Offensive call right no. there, flipping possession. Just a little too aggressive in the offensive end there. Kind of looked like the uh, uh, offensive player was trying to create distance and space with his arm. Yeah, you can get an, away with an awful lot in water polo, but uh, most of that happens below the water. There the you thing. go. So as soon as, as soon as one of those officials can see skin, that's a problem. Here you see a breakaway here for the River Rats. Oh, what a move. Gobbled up by Luke Packer, though. Packer doing a great job of getting back and getting in front of his man. Man. Stopping that breakaway. Boy, Barnett's really fighting down there with that off arm. You can see the, the headgear even coming off of Farmer for Pioneers. And here we see another long opportunity possibly for the Pioneer. Pioneers trying to get back into it. And with only 34 seconds left to go here in the period. It's going to be a penalty shot. Going to have a penalty shot here for Pi High. Henri Sheenigan, I believe that is in there. Powerful shot. Just crushes off that crossbar. Echoes throughout the entire pool, probably up through the hallway. And then a nice grab there by the Pioneers once again. Aiden McCoy pulling forward. They got a two-on-one. Rat defender's got to make a decision, and he skips the ball in to tie this one at three with 15 seconds to go here in this first period. Well, that was started by a turnover for the River Rats. Number two, uh, Tyler Gibbs didn't even see the pass. So as he's going away, he, and we, we, we saw that goal before, but, you know, the, the pass really precipitated all of that action. Mm -hmm. Easy turnover, two-on-one breakaway for the Pioneers. And we talked about the Pioneers having great speed anyway. You can't give them opportunities like that. Here we got five seconds left here to go in this first period. As time winds down, there'll be a penalty. There'll be a whistle, excuse me. And a long opportunity there, but not so much. And that will do it for the first period of play. We are all tied up in CTN's Game of the Week. Stick around. This action will keep going. We'll be right back. Horners, Flat Earthers, Mike Griffo, Trump Troll Army, Autism is Real, Palestine.
Palestinian politics. But the ball. This Washington beast forehead people. Demonic devices. Diverse viewpoints. Dynamic personalities. 30 minutes. Contact CTN to schedule your show on Act at Ann Arbor. And I'm talking to you, buddy. start of the second period is about to begin here Kevin uh, is it possible to summarize that first period of play hey we really didn't have, we had the easiest job in the house I mean <laughs> these two teams really put on a display of back and forth action non-stop you usually get that in water polo but you and I were saying during the break it's special when we have a score like this after one Nick yeah and these are really two uh, different styles of play and both of them are excelling at what they're doing right now Couple of goals by Aiden McCoy. Uh, goal from uh, Shemke there for the Pioneers as well. And then for the River Rats, you had Barrett, Underwood, and Fraser putting the biscuit in the basket. And, and, and you said it, Nick. It was just strategy. And it's starting off the, kind of the similar way. Pioneer, they really want to get that ball into a quality shot each time, each possession. They don't want to have the shot clock be a quick shot clock either because then that takes away from here on on the opposite end of the pool. Yeah, here you see Pioneer. This half-court offense, though, not really their strong point, as we've talked about. They're real dangerous in the counterattacks and uh, using their speed, utilizing their speed in a very different way. We're going to have to get a real close-up on number 12 for the River Rats, his face. Barnett looks like he has on like one of those clear masks. Like he, he's playing with a broken nose or something. If yeah, you kind of look like that. Yeah, the old, uh, the old Rip Hamilton special. There you go, man. There. Jack DeBona once again. I wonder, does that help him? I mean, I guess it can't hurt. Otherwise, he wouldn't do it. But, yeah, I, for my money, I think that the water would get underneath that. Or water in the eyes of chlorine, right? Yeah. I mean, he doesn't have to have his eyes closed or anything. Water splashing right up. He's got a shield. Yeah, it could be it. I don't know. Barnett, little pass trying to get into that whole set right there to Sean Underwood. Gobbled up by Ruley there. You can see that was a, just a different shot. It wasn't even a, a difficult shot for the goalie to, to uh, a, a, a locate and block. Mm -hmm. Easy. And that's the, what Huron did in that first period. They were skipping a lot of shots yep. in there. Yep. Yeah, you're exactly right. But anytime it's going to be difficult for the goaltender. I mean, you know, you're you're – a f your eyes are a foot above the water, and then you've just got all this mass of, of headgear and bodies and shoulders floating in front of you, and that's if nobody swims by and kicks you in the shin along for the ride. And, and, and you're, 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 you're treading water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so add that in there, and right? The, the, the constant egg beaters, the constant work as far as that goes, you're exactly right about that. Uh, as far as the pioneers are concerned, they talked about uh, they did a lot of two-a-days for the first time. Uh, this year. You know, shorter times in the pool for practice. Wow, big shot there by Dylan Schmitzerly. Yeah, that was like a Shaquille O'Neal kind of dunk. The cage is still rocking after that shot. I mean, he really sh threw that ball up in there Just pretty hard. Just a real blast Man. coming off that uh, And off we get another post. penalty shot here. Here we got Schmitzerly once again. I wouldn't want to leave him all alone out there. Gets up, good torque down in the bottom right of the net. Not very much that Matthew Ruley can do about that. And this game is no longer tied, Kevin Bryant. And Huron has, is really spreading the wealth around. His first goal, four different goal scorers. I mean, as a pioneer, it's going to be tough to locate the hot hand. 
Yeah, really even knew where he was going. Like, he jumped Still to that side. Stop. He kept his hand down below. No, no chance. Just uh, no that, chance. that was a Joe Zamaya fastball. <laughs> you have to Google that guy. <laughs> Let's see if Pioneer can come back and answer on their own. And it's kind of unfair for Dylan Chesmetzler to be both in the hole and on the point. I mean, offense and defense, he's bigger than a lot of the kids out there in the pool. And then for him to be on the defensive end, he just covers up so much right. age before you get to the goalkeeper. Yeah, that's definitely the type of player that you need to be in top physical condition so he can work both ends of the pool that way. And that's the way you have to defend a guy that big with two people. Mm -hmm. Look at that pressure. A little forechecking. That's smart, the whole idea. They don't want uh, Pioneer to get in that transition offense. Great grab there, falling down and still manages to get that ball away and nearly puts one into the net. Hyrus was just a brute out there for Huron, but he didn't get the possession back, and that goes another goal for the Pioneers. And there we go, Henri Schnee again. And Henri just all alone there. I think he just realized, like, holy crow, nobody is anywhere near me. I better fire this guy around before somebody realizes that I'm in the middle of the pool with the ball all by myself. He even surprised Endicott, the goalkeeper. He was over in the middle of the net, and he just couldn't have enough time to react and cover the front side of the cage. Once again, we are even Stevens here in the pool. Oh, big shot right on Ruley. Great job. He's more defending himself than stopping that ball from going in the pool. I wonder how many saves the uh, post has right now for both sides. I, I mean, they've, they've caught it for sure. Great job by really getting his hands up on that one, though. And here's another one more shot at this. I mean, there it is there. It just knocks that one away from his face. <laughs> Very fortunate that uh, self preservation, man. That one up. Exactly. And more big saves down the other end of the pool. Great defensive efforts here from both squads here this evening, Kevin. Yeah, and you got some young guys in the polls. Mm -hmm. You got a, a sophomore and a junior. I mean, that, that's special for both of these. But we know about the type of water polo players in this area. Oh, I definitely. mean, you mentioned even Skyline. I mean, you add all three schools and you have, wow, now that's a one-timer, <laughs> right? Oh, I mean, just, I mean he, just, he barely had his hand around that and sent that right into Ruley. Yeah, look at uh, Huron Bench is opening up there, trying to get their defense to step up. Here you hear the Rat Bench really getting into it. They were super pumped up before this game started, and they're keeping that uh, momentum going. They're keeping that energy strong. Well, like we mentioned in the open, it's been all last year Huron took each match. Pioneer is amped up. New coach, well, an old new coach. <laughs> right. And they have a new strategy coming in here, so they really are pumped up, which has really got the rats fired up as well. Another big shot right there by Edmund Barnett. Man, he's got a cannon on that. In, in his form coming out, it starts mm -hmm. from the bottom, the lower half, and he gets all the way to the top of his shot with a lot of force and velocity. Sure, and obviously the higher he gets, the more torque he's going to be able to put on that. But, yeah, that is a big kid, and he knows exactly how to get the most out of his shot. Man, almost like a coach's son or something. <laughs> Look at that. Great shot. The great uh, reflexes there by Ruley. He was up and away, and he still managed to get his right hand out and keep that one from going in behind him. River Rats once again on the offensive. Big shot of the post. Did that go in? Goalie's that best looked friend like once it went again. in the net, though. That looked like it bounced in the inside and came out. Schmitzerly with another huge And now we got a timeout shot. coming. And now we got timeout by Pi High. They're going to go and talk and just probably say, hey, guys, let's catch our breath here for a second. Well, we only got 124 left in this half. Mm -hmm. uh, teams knotted up. Great timeout to do one thing, Nick, like you just said, catch your breath and finish off this first half the same fashion you've been playing. And that's good strategy from a coach that's been around. You know, we said five or four championships in five years before he retired. Mm -hmm. I mean, Coach Packard, he has a resume, and he's just dusting it off right now. 
Yeah, once again, coach for uh, the Pioneers from 1987 to 2001 before Will Hart took over. Will Hart actually played for Packard, and then Packard's back, uh, back in the saddle again, now uh, coaching once again. Looks and like no Tom slouch Negger on the other, over there. other side, with Paul Barnett. That's yeah, Barnett right there in that white shirt, but right there talking to him to his right is uh, assistant coach uh, Tom uh, Magner. And uh, he's probably telling them, we need to get back on the offense. Mm -hmm. You know, the River Rats, are, they're known for their speed, the amount of goals. And right now, this second period, it's been owned by the Pioneer defense. Yeah, I would say so. I would say that you're definitely right about that. And while we have a brief time out here, we should talk about our upcoming schedule here. It's fall sports for CTN. We've got uh, Look at that games, variety, man. Variety like crazy and, and games coming at you twice a week, every single week. We've got lots of content here for you. So check out CTN Sports and check us out on YouTube as well. And you're going to see a little bit of everything here on Game of the Week. And, and even last year, out of all these games, we have more games to pick the key player of the game from and the key <laughs> play. And then at the end of the season, we ask you fans to vote on the top key play from all of these broadcasts. So we want your help in the picking the top key player of the year, folks. I mean, yeah, there's way too many for us to pick. So a little, little extra, a little extra help goes a long way. You're and sometimes right I'm there. a homer for the River Rat. <laughs> Just sometimes. <laughs> It's okay to be impartial. Or sometimes, sometimes means all the time. I know. And here we'll get action started again. 120 left to go here in this first half. Really oh, starts look at it that off. They send it into the corner. Look at there. that defense. With two hands out of the water there, pushing and shoving. Man, that Dylan size Metzler, he is big player, man. Big time player. Grants with numbers coming down to their side of the pool. Great job by Pioneer, though, getting back. They're using that speed to take away those numbers very quickly. There's a turnover, and the Huron player just turned and tossed it right to the Pioneer. Defender that was right there. See, that's what I'm talking about. Maybe some of that water getting in your eye and you don't see clearly. Yeah, that, that could be it. That could be part of the issue for him. Pioneer pushing out. Great job cutting inside all by himself in front of the net now. Harassed the whole way along the way by uh, Ben Hires down there. That's going to be a man advantage. Hires off the penalty box. This be big going into the half. Oh, what a stop. Great, great job blocking that and keeping it in the pool along the same way. That didn't just go out. They knocked that down, went after it, and they gained possession, and it's now their turn and yeah, to and turn off the pool. And then you bring Din Hoder in uh, from the bench. Says Metzler takes a break. Great job, though, by the Pioneers of getting back in their defense. And we'll see one last opportunity here for the River Rats with seven seconds to go here in this first half. We'll see if Rooley tries to get anything going here with three, two, and one. That will do it for the first half of action here at Ann Arbor, here on CTN Ann Arbor's Game of the Week. All square, four to four. Stick around, folks. This second half will be something to see. that CTN welcomes the members of the Ann Arbor City Council to Ward Talk? On the third Wednesday of every month, a different representative from one of the city's five wards joins us in the studio to discuss matters important to the people and government of Ann Arbor. Submit your questions for the next episode of Ward Talk by emailing ctn at a2gov.org or visiting our Twitter page at CTN Ann Arbor. What is CTN? 
CTN? Isn't that the commerce telemarketing neighborhood or something? CTN is Ann Arbor's community television network. We have provided free television production workshops and services to residents and nonprofit organizations since 1973. We also provide free programming about our community on cable channels 16, 17, 18, and 19. So, if you have an event coming up, are part of a nonprofit, or you simply just want to get creative, come on by. For more information, visit us at www.a2gov.org slash ctn. And welcome back everybody to CTN Ann Arbor's Game of the Week. We got a barn burner for you right now. 4-4 currently here at River Rat Stadium. Uh, back and forth action. That second period only saw a couple of goals, but so, so many opportunities, especially for the River Rats. They might have broken a record for uh, posts hit in that one, Kevin. Uh, a number of them. Both sides, though, really. I mean, a lot of great shots on the, the net, but <laughs> that post was winning. Yeah, the post is definitely leading in saves tonight. Off of that one, though, quick goal in there by Dylan Schmitzerly. Puts another one in with that high torque skip shot. Schmitzerly has, you know, he's the senior captain. He's showing why he's the big man on campus. He's showing us defense. He's showing us shots from different angles. The power shot, the, the skip shot. I mean, the guy is showing us he's got skills. And this is not from on the doorstep. And the real problem there is the Pioneer defense was giving him about three and a half to four feet on that one. You're not going to be able to get let any of these attackers from here on get that kind of open spot in front of them. They're just going to take advantage of it every single time. Whether they're, it's Schmitz they're really, offensive minded. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then you see the defense from uh, Shev Medler right there in the middle of the pool. I mean, when you're that big, Nick, you can come out and you don't even have to be in position, but right. you're affecting shots. Yep, you're exactly right. You know, big, like long arms, broad shoulders, all of those things are in effect when you're playing defense that way. You're completely correct about that. And that second period, the recap which you had just started, it was a lot of the pioneer style of play. Mm -hmm. Huron, they, they lost that little swag they had in that first period of everybody getting involved in the action. One-timer, speaking of getting back in the action, Aiden McCoy now with the hat trick. One-timer, and he brings his team back even with those River Rats. And we got all big-time players stepping up. That's the captain again, one of the, the captains for the Pioneers. You are absolutely right. You can see him calling for it. He's got his arm up just a little bit, receives that thing perfectly, palms it, and that guy is gone pass Russ Endicott. Well, we got an injury. One of the players for the uh, Huron is out of the pool, now going to the bench. And it looks like it's number seven, Max Frazier. And we've called his name out, and he's had a couple goals as well, uh, one goal. Uh, but it looks like he's dealing with a cramp of some sorts. Or is he still in? Frazier's still in. I believe that's 13. Yep, there's Frazier now receiving that pass. Pioneer defender draped all over him. Yeah. Smart move by Fraser there, ducking his head under. Yeah, you, to get didn't, that whistle. you didn't see any kind of the, the pool moving, though, so there had to be some cool action going oh, yeah. on up underneath that, that slowed the action down. Yeah, anybody that's ever played this sport or watched it for more than five minutes knows that there's always some action going on below the water level. First time... Uh, You see Packard pushing that ball forward and just using his speed. Excellent job by Schmitzerly, though, coming from behind, pulling Packard down. And an opportunity for Underwood there. It's going to be a quick timeout. Timeout here by the River Rats.
And it looks like uh, Coach Barnett is trying to get uh, Edwin back into the action here for uh, this power play. Yeah, you might be right about that. You see uh, the Barnetts there chatting it up at the top of the pool. You see him bounce in, and Ben Hires, the, one of the other captains, coming out. And, uh, yeah, it, I, Barnett did look a little shaken. I wonder if he might have been having an issue with that mask like we were talking about. We see things starting off by Endicott, moving the ball around. Man advantage here for the River Rats. Very patient attack so far. Everybody more than willing to make a little fake, try to find the old man, and then quick Close. misdirection shot there. Once again off the pole, scooped up right in front of that whole set position, and Ben DeHouder there grabs that one and sends it in. Right spot, right time. Better to be lucky than good. Let's throw them all out there because, you know, that rebound off the post. The post wins again. But in a better position was the River Rat. And uh, was that Ben? Yep. Uh, then Hoyter, I mean, he just he, he motored his way right to that ball and slammed it in. And Pioneer defense nowhere to be seen on that one. Again, they might have been marking more in a man-to-man -man type of way. It was kind of just pulled in. And it was a kind of odd ricochet. That ball didn't go anywhere. It kind of just dropped yeah. into the pool. Didn't, it didn't come back with a hard kind of bounce back. Pioneer gaining that zone, pushing in with that speed. Runs into a brick wall of Dylan Schmitzerly, <laughs> though. High shot. Nice save by Endicott there. And he gets a rousing applause from the home faithful. And Heron's really taking over with the momentum in here in this third period for Pioneer. They have to trigger from this side of the pool their defense. And a big shot there by Edmund Barnett. He can see that one plenty clearly. Mask not an issue there. Comes back in and buries a shot to put his team up by two goals now. Seven to five lead. Well, you, the River Rats. you saw Barnett the shot before that. He kind of went high and it hit over the post. This one. He goes right down into the corner. He sees where he's going, and boom. Oh, top side. Yeah, you're top totally show. right about that. If at first you don't succeed, try something else. And a lot of the shots we've been talking about have been of the at skip variety, mm -hmm. skipping in front uh, uh, of the, the, the keeper there, a Royale. But that one, straight power shot, top show. Yeah, Barnett, no, no, no trying to deceive it, no trying to hope for some sort of skip. Just gets up, puts some torque on it, and fires that one into the net. Take one more look at that one there. Kind of pops out and gets up. A couple of quick head fakes and then just sends it home. Well, those fakes with the ball really took the – you saw the goalkeeper come up a couple times, mm -hmm. and those fakes worked. You know, a couple fits here and a fit there, and boom, I got an open cage. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't take much, and the whole trick is to get that goalie to pop up. Yeah. Because once they're up, they're at the mercy of what only their hands can do. I mean, there's no footing for them. They're not recovering that. They're up until they slide back down. And that smart play by the coach, right? Burnett bringing in uh, his son, right. <laughs> bringing him back in. But that timeout, I mean, they really took advantage of it. And this, this timeout here, I believe, by Pioneer is to really set that defense, Nick. Because, you know, they that's how their M.O. is. You know, counterpunch. Right. Right. No, they, they definitely want to keep with their man-to-man. -man. They definitely want to keep marking those big scores that the Rats have out there, but they can't let somebody sweep in and get those big rebounds because that's been just crushing for them so far in this game. And here we get going again. Pioneer starting off with possession. Lots of movement there. Uh, perhaps a little too much movement around the ball there by the River Rats. Whistles galore right now. And both defenders really collapsing on the ball there for Huron. And, you know, it looked like you were going to get a, an advantage there. 
Pioneer more than happy to just play the ball back and try to find somebody open. Or somebody makes something happen for themselves. Luke Packard there, the great spin Rooney. And now you've got Pioneer with another big chance there. Off the crossbar. A oh, good job by Endicott in coming out. Endicott really timed that play well and used that top post. Goalie's best friend, Nick. Yeah, we've seen it time and time again. I mean, and you know, that just speaks to how aggressive both of these teams are playing right now. They're not afraid to take shots and just wheel around and fire them off just like that one. Dylan Schmitzerly once again. And now the River Rats with a commanding three goal lead. This is the time of the match where the Pioneers have to find something on their offensive end. We've been mentioning defense, 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 but they're really going to have to find the back of that cage soon, Nick. Yeah, you're right. With only 2.35 left to go here in this third period, you know, they, they have the ability to score quickly, and they've definitely had plenty of opportunities, but you don't want to fall behind three goals. And right here's a big one. And they answer once again, Aiden McCoy. Not sure where the Pioneers would be no. without McCoy. They'd definitely be down four goals. Well, uh, yeah, maybe that. <laughs> but, yeah, he's, def he, he's on schedule. Yeah. We just said the Pioneers need to get back in it, and a lot of their goals, Nick, have been off of Heron turnovers, and mm -hmm. that was another turnover there that created a breakout opportunity for McCoy. And what does that tell you about the kind of player where your team falls behind and you can count on that one dude to bring you back? Captain? So that you're, yeah, that helps. That's exactly, that's how you become captain right <laughs> yeah, there. That's right. Yeah, it's not always about being the fastest or the strongest or the guy that scores the most goals. It's putting the ball in the net when it matters the most and rallying the troops around you so that, you know, that body language doesn't start to slump. Or come back and have some nice drop pass just like you just did there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, new player in, that's uh, Patel coming back into the match. But watch this quick little pass right over the shoulder. Just, if that's a dry pass, mm. that's a one-timer. Yep, yep, you could be right about that. Great defense there by the River Rats. and more solid defense by the Rats there. They're just doing a really nice job of being in the right place at the right time. More of a, a zone defense and just awaiting for Pioneer to come into those spots. They know where they're gonna be. Nice little fake arc shot there. Almost had Ruley fooled. That was almost like an alley-oop. Yeah. It was kind of just thrown right to the side of the cage where one time might have been a nice little finish of the yeah, that play. Yeah, it's just, just that, uh, that little finger roll, that, that, uh, I like that, that up and under, yeah. When you've seen these just rockets coming at you all game long, and then all of a sudden mm. this little floaty guy comes in, you're not expecting that. That's a, that's the changeup. Packard in that whole set position finds an open man, but just a lot of contact there. Covered up. Yeah, that was a good call on uh, uh, Gibbs. I mean, he mauled the pioneer player <laughs> on that when the ball came over. Look at that. I mean, if 15's in the middle there, that's a dunk yep. on that, that last replay. Turnover. Yeah, this big. This big. Here you got a two on two here by the Rats pushing forward, but there's that speed of the Pioneers once again. Players getting back. Skip shot, double skip up into the crossbar. Great job. Holy you called cow. it. The defense of getting back yeah. collapsing in. And it looked like it was a timeout, but then it was just a timeout to set the the field. 
Uh, yeah, but I believe that you're right about that. It's like one of those timeouts of basketball where you move it up to half court. Yep, <laughs> just move it up to half court and let's get back at it. Yep. 30 seconds left to go here in this third period. Once again, we'd like to thank everybody for joining us for the CTN's Game of the Week. Hope you're having a good time watching this one. I know we're having a good time talking about it. And that one just Got squeaks it. inside oh, of man. Endicott there. Oh, that's the real McCoy. <laughs> Aiden McCoy continues to make his mark on this game, and he brings his team within one goal now with only oh. 17 seconds left to play here in this third period. Best shot of the night from our cameraman. You can really see that on that instant replay of the small hole that shot got through. And now with nine seconds left, we'll see if River Rats can work it around and try to get one more opportunity. Quick passes around the perimeter of the pool. No go before the buzzer. And that will do it for this third period of play. You're going to want to stick around, though. With only a one-goal advantage for the River Rats, anything could happen. Please stick around. We'll see you for the fourth period in just a moment. Social media is everywhere in Ann Arbor, and so is CTN. You can find CTN on your smartphone, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can always check us out at www.a2gov.org slash CTN. Hashtag us at hashtag CTN Ann Arbor. Let me ask you a question. What do you value? How about access to your child's education, their football game, their swim meet, their high school musical, their academic future? Does that matter? What about your access to your government, your police, fire, and public safety, parks and recreation activities, state and local officials, the folks you elect to make decisions for your community? Is that worth anything to you? What about your rights, freedom of speech, to communicate your message, to let your voice be heard? That's got to count for something, right? So let me ask you again, what do you value? How about public, educational, and government access television? It belongs to you. Let's keep it that way. Most children today have never seen a TV antenna, and they don't necessarily know how cable TV gets to their home. But when they come to CTN, we teach them. We even show them how their parents used to watch television the old-fashioned way. And then they make TV. Hi, welcome to PAC 419, also known as PAC camp -a -Lot. My name is Will Endress, and I like scouting because we do a lot of camping. Call us to inquire about a free CTN tour for your students. 734-794-6150. CTN, teaching television to the next generation. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for clicking on us. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to want to keep those other tabs closed because we are in for something for this fourth period here at Kevin Bryant. The River Rats currently with an 8-7 lead, but no lead is safe as we've seen in this game. The Pioneers can score quickly with that speed. 
However, the River Rats, they've just got some strong, strong offensive arms. They're doing great working the ball around in their half-court offense. And these kids are fired up for this fourth period play. <laughs> they so called a false, a false start on the, that's, that's on the jump ball. I mean, Can't get too excited. the River Rats, they just came flying out, man. These teams are ready for this period, Nick. No, and can you blame them? This has been back and forth action the whole way. No lead is safe. As we've discussed, we've had shots coming in from all over the place. High shots, low shots, skip shots, one-timers. Just a little bit of everything so far in this match. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what this fourth period will bring. Well, I mean, anytime you get these two squads together, crosstown rivalry, it's going to be special all the way to the end. And now you got the crowd coming into it. This is a live house right now for this fourth period. Oh, definitely. The crowd is way into this one. The, both benches are completely into this. You'll hear the chants. You're hearing the let's go defense. You're hearing everybody supporting their teammates in that pool. Both coaches are up and moving around. Uh, just an electric atmosphere here, which is dangerous because that's water down there, baby. And, and that third period was kind of a microcosm of the first two periods, really. Here on putting up four goals and then Pioneer clipping back at that lead and not allowing the Rats to feel good about what they just accomplished in that entire period. Chipping away, chipping away. You're completely correct about that. River Rats going to take their time moving this one up. 18 seconds left to go on the shot clock with them here. Well, this first half of this uh, last period, it's going to be a lot of open play. But I guarantee you, these two experienced coaches are going to use those timeouts and really design some possessions that they feel great about. Not good, great about. Well, I'm curious how aggressive either coach is going to get bringing up those defenders to try to get into the offense. I'm curious if Pioneer will feel that it's necessary to do that a little bit or if they'll just stay with their conservative game plan. Well, conservative for them. Conservative game plan, standard game plan and uh, just see if they can get their offensive players to make things happen. Well, we mentioned that in the break that one of the Pioneers was uh, missing, uh, Jack Shimke. He yep. was scored one of the goals. You know the real McCoy, Aiden, has been out there. He's got five goals on the night for the Pioneers, but he may need some help yep. in this fourth period. Yeah, one man can't do everything, but he's done a really nice job of answering when it was most necessary for his team. Coming up big in big time moments. And there's that defense from Pioneer causing the turnover. Quick outlet, Nick. Way ahead for Henri. Breakaway now for Pioneer. Knocked away from behind by Tyler Gibbs. Advantage Pioneer, though. The play keeps moving forward. Smart plays there by Huron by taking these minor infractions where it'll stop play so they can get back and set their defense. Right you are, but a long shot skips in past Endicott, and we have got a tie game here at Ann Arbor Huron. Luke Packard, coach's son, really? Come on now. Packard is the first to score here in this fourth period. Nobody around Packard. That was a breakdown in the Huron defense. He had a clear vision of where he wanted to put that ball, Nick. Opens up the scoring here, and now we are all tied up 8-8. Eight to eight. High scoring affair here. And, and high scoring, but low for the River Rats. They came off a weekend where they were putting up 17 points each match. Pioneer defense is doing a great job. Oh, most definitely. And, uh, you know, the Rats have hit an awful lot of points. Great job there by Ruel one more time. I've been calling Ruli all game. That is not correct. Matthew Ruel. Well, up, but goes up underneath of him. Edwin Barnett, the other coach's son, puts one in. And Edwin, you see him, the masked man out there, coming in with that last goal. That was sweet because he's not giving up on plays. Watch this. It's a good shot, but he, he took his effort to grab that ball and make that shot count. And he had Luke Packard right in his grill the whole time, too. It's a great job of him getting up out of the water, creating a little bit of separation so that he could see where that ball was going and firing it exactly where he wanted it to go. River Rats back with the one goal lead. Oh, Huron's down another man on this possession. 
wonder if Pioneer would like that possession back and maybe work that one around a little bit more to try to find a little more quality opportunity. And in the fourth period, you want all of them to count, yep. really. You don't have any ones to, to leave on the shelf. True enough, but with 3.34 left to go, Pioneer's still going to have plenty more chances, plenty more looks at that uh, net, you'd think. DeBona with a sloppy pass there, nearly got away from the Huron side, but they still have an opportunity. What a save! Luel, great job knocking that one down and sticking with it, taking that step back into the net to make sure that that one doesn't cross the goal line. Hey, he's a sophomore. Wow, that was a great stop from him. Yeah, he's definitely played a very poised game, that young man. For a sophomore, he's doing a great, great job down there, facing down all this adversity, facing down these huge, huge shots time after that, time. That looked like a penalty on the goalkeeper. He had his hand on the cage before that whistle. Long pass up for the Rats. Excellent job by the Pioneer defense pulling back there and getting into position. Great block there by Packard coming out of the water. Quick chance there by Barnett too. And Pioneer, they're in this, they, they, they not letting Huron make a two goal spread. And this is just punch, counter punch, back and forth action. Crowds on the edge of their seat almost every pass. <laughs> you see, light touch shot in there. Endicott not fooled at all. He was ready for that one. Out of all the offense, that save there, man, that was huge. Take a look at that one again. Maybe expecting that big high shot. Instead, he just puts a little touch on it, just rolls oh, off I'm... his fingertips. But Endicott was ready for it. Now, that was a pinky save. Yep. Huron pushes forward into the zone, trying to get to that whole set spot. Pioneer Man, did you defense You right see that there. defense for Packard? Yep. Packard's Aaron comes up and he stops the Huron attacker by putting his hand on his arm. Just both of those defenders doing exactly what they're supposed to do, but now Pioneer moving forward and flips that one just over the crossbar. Schmetzler came back on the defense that time. I mean, he's playing a great match up and down the pool. You can say that for all of these young men that are playing right now. Everybody is pulling their own weight. Everybody's had big opportunities. They're getting back on defense. They're marking their men. Just great stuff back and forth. No soccer trophies for everybody here, Nick. We got to point out the guys that are stepping yep, up. You're right. I know everybody's doing well, but everybody's not doing what he's doing. Well, and there's going to be another penalty. Looks like there may be a penalty, but now followed by a timeout by yeah. Pioneer. Yeah. So that's that's the smart thing to do right now. We're about to have uh, a man short for the River Rats. So Coach Paul Barmet, uh, excuse me, uh, Don Packard, is going to get his troops together and set up a play. He has two going on shot clock. Maybe two more possessions, right? Mm -hmm. Down one. This is a huge possession. That's where the timeout. Let's set up our best play. And then let's play our style of play because our style of play can get us this W in this last 125. And I'm curious what kind of play they're going to draw up because Pioneer's big advantage, as we've talked about all night long, is their speed. Mm -hmm. So in the half-court offense, they're going to need to find a get, try to get a man free, whether there'll be somebody on the creation side of that themselves or if it'll be some sort of give and go maybe. That last goal that uh, Pioneer scored off of Packard, he was free. Yep. You know, he was out at the point, maybe a, a, a 10 meter shot, and, and that's maybe what they're going to try. Cause some confusion. You're right. When you have the speed, you can do it on a breakout, but now in the half court, some deception is going to have to come into play. You're right, but we've seen players like Packard and uh, McCoy be creators. They get the ball in their hands, and you've seen them spin away a little bit, just find a little bit of open space, and they can do a lot with that small window. And watch the ricochet off of the post. We've oh, yeah. Se we've seen a lot That's of those. That's a great call. That's a great call. We've seen so many big rebounds. That's got to be on the minds of the offensive players as well as the defensive players. 
obvious penalty there. You saw the hands right to the pioneer attacker. Right on the face from the Huron and guy. To that block. point, we saw the River Rats playing off a little bit. Edmund Barnett caught that one right in the schnoz, though. That's why you wear the face mask right there, man. We've been wondering, face mask this, face mask that. Uh, his nose is probably still in one piece because of that. And what was the call here? Look at the call. It's going to be a turnover, and Pioneer is going to come and away Den with Hooter it. into the box. Big save by Endicott. Huge, huge action, Nick. Oh, my God. That's just great play. Great play right there. Great presence of mind. Well, we don't know what the call was. It, it, it looked like it was a penalty on Huron. A player went to the hole, and immediately Pioneer comes on the attack. But heads up play for the River Rats. Quick change possession. They know the game's on the line. Yeah, Endicott is completely dialed in right now. Like, there's no doubt in my mind that he can see the entire pool. He can talk to his defenders. He knows where everything's supposed to be. He's calling a great game, and he's just doing everything that is required of him to keep his team up by one goal right now. Last steal instructions there by Barnett. You see the Pioneers, they're, they're already in the water. They're trying to set their defense, and I guarantee you, Watch the outlet, Nick. It has to be a quick goal for the Pioneers. Because of the shot clock, they want to get one more opportunity. You're completely right. 29 seconds left to go in the shot clock. 57 seconds left to go in this entire game. And there's going to have to be crisp passes and no mistakes to be made. And once again, if that ball hits off a crossbar or a post, Oh, man, right off the side of his noodle. Man. I should not be laughing at that, but he got that good. And in slow motion, crystal clear, beautiful And the hand goes right up to the face because you know that had to smart. Yeah, he's, uh, he's seeing some stars on that one. And uh, he's not in the pool. Oh, yeah, he is. Far side of the pool. You see Edwin Stand Barnett. Strong. Hey, he's got a mask on. Yeah, there it is. Rub some dirt on it, right? Water, dirt, it all same. Now River here's Rats, the thing. More than happy to take the time on That's this one. That's what my question to you was. What are, are they gonna? But see, here you go now. A quick turnaround. The outlet pass that we talked about. That's Tristan Starr moving above and beyond up there. Senior Tristan Starr. It's Tristan Sir. Excuse me. Edwin Barnett came back and really made that play. Oh, what another giant save by Endicott. Are you kidding me right now? Point blank range, wide open, palm save. Well, folks, you can sit here all game long and call goal after goal after goal, but that's my player of the game right there with that save, Junior Russ Endicott. Oh, wow, you just saved the game, my friend. Henri with that beautiful one-timer. He probably was counting that one as a, net, as a goal. That was going into the net as far as he was concerned. But Endicott, great positioning, great sight, and just timed it perfectly to knock that ball away. I mean, his entire play, Nick, He at first the ball was into a position where he had to decide, should I swim out and mm -hmm. get it, or should I allow my defenders to come back and help? He allowed his defenders to yes. come back and help. He protected the cage, and, man, did he spring out of the water at the perfect time great for that block. Great, great instincts by Endicott we've seen in this fourth period. I mean, really the entire game, but this fourth period, he has been the big difference maker for the River Rats. There's no doubt about that. And an aggressive attack there by the Pioneers. Uh-oh. Is this going to be a penalty shot with 21 seconds? This is what you're looking for when you play sports, man. Like, this is it. This is the opportunity for Pioneer to get in there. This is an opportunity for Endicott to continue to solidify what he's done for his team. And high shot into the net. Andre Sneegan right there. And we've got a tie game, Kevin Bryant. Nine to nine. 19 seconds left. There you see Andre he waits for it. Quick shot. Didn't bother getting high out of the pool. That was all arm and all shoulder on that shot and fires that one past Endicott. Something finally finds its way past Endicott. And now 15 seconds left to see if the River Rats can get one last chance over. down into that whole set area. There's a little penalty up, and that ball goes in! I believe that is in! Wow! And in! We got a little eating! Nine seconds to go, and he pulls that one in 
pass through well. Unbelievable shot. Wow. Great presence of mind. Watch Gets Ruel up, off, out of the water, and that thing just floats off the fingertips, off the tippy tips, and then just drops into the end. But this game is not quite over yet. We've got three seconds left to go, two seconds left to go, one second left to go, and of course, it ricochets off that crossbar, and I cannot believe the water polo match that we just saw. This was really something else, folks. Uh, if you're watching this at home on CTN, I highly recommend jumping onto our social media, going to YouTube, and watching this thing again and again. Here's that one last shot, just up over fingertips on that, pushes it up onto the crossbar, and that is game over. Victory for the River Rats, a big win for them, Kevin Bryant. While this match is over, we've still got a lot left to do with player of the game. I mean, we're thinking here, getting our minds ready, prepared for overtime. Uh -uh. Not so much. First, this is an epic goal. With Let's just, just drop that out. That's epic. Uh, because Barnett's been throwing all kinds of power shots. Mm -hmm. And in the money play, he goes to the lob shot. Get out of here. Great presence of mind. Great presence of mind. And also knowing that maybe Royal didn't have the great look at where that ball was. So just a little floater got up and over him. Royal still got a piece of it. He still got as much of it as he possibly could, but that thing just dropped in. Well, and, and before we go grab this last player, I mean, think about the post one again. Mm -hmm. The post on the left, final shot of the game, Nick. This was one of the best water polo matches <laughs> we've had on CTN Sports. Heck of a match, without a doubt. Watch it again and again. Stick around. We'll have player of the game in just a moment. And welcome back to the CTN Sports of the Game. I mean, game of the week. Game of the season. And this guy right here, wow. Edwin, that was a great match. But talk about that final goal. You get a timeout, you come in, and then you're at the point. Walk me to that. So our coach told me, said, get the ball in your hands. Um, I decided to come through. I, I saw the goalie coming out in the goal a little bit. I saw the opportunity in that lower corner. Finessed it up over his head and went in, you know, um, just, yeah. Well, hey, I tell you, all match long, you were throwing all of those power shots in there, and we were expecting you to get another one of those power shots, and then you come in with the live shot. Good, heady play. Another question I want to ask is, how difficult is it to play with a mask on out there? Uh, it's pretty hard. I've had it for about a week and a half now. I'm starting to get used to it, but you know, sometimes uh, you, you can't see very well and stuff, but it's, it's going a lot better now. Last question about your netminder. I mean, he came in and played a great game in that final save there. What did that mean to the squad? That was so important. That just like hyped us up so much. We were just so excited. He really played very well out there. Um, I'm just I'm excited to see him play in the future on for two years. Very good. Awesome win again for you and the River Rats. Congratulations and look forward to seeing you guys again on CTN Sports. Hey Nick, I'm gonna toss it back over to you to close us out. Hey, thanks a lot, Kevin. And as usual, we need to talk about all the incredible people that make this broadcast possible. On camera this evening, we've got Mike Kosky and Brittany Schembeer. Audio and replay is Nathan Johnson, and the director is, of course, Robert Cross. For Kevin Bryant, I am Nick Wisniewski. Thank you so much for joining us for this amazing match. Once again, 10-9 to 9 here on wins in the final seconds of water polo. Join us for next week's Game of the Week. <laughs>